welcome to this second video of the Taito Egret 2 Mini. After praising Metal Black at the end of the review of the first video, I thought best do a full playthrough. This is my first playthrough of the game all the way, with only minor practice on some of the earlier levels, so it's not entirely a memorised playthrough to give you a vibe for the difficulty curve when enemies and waves come at you unexpected. I love the art style in this game and the effect of the 3D that it does and layering is really something for the time. There's an overall sense of hopelessness in the setting and the main idea behind it is that you have a ship that's able to collect these unusual energy particles called Nualon and they increase the beam weapons in your ship which is known as the Black Fly and it replaces the idea of having a bomb as well the more you collect the more powerful the beam is and you can release it as a huge energy pattern that cycles through about three to five times faster than the average uh, bomb while also lasting about three times longer maybe even more in fact as you can see there's this whole idea of this hopelessness and running to an emergency when humanity is nearly lost which I really like there's some of the art direction that I feel went into the later Darius Gaiden game but I really prefer the unique style in this and it seems to really have its own vibe to it that not many shooters have quite captured as you can see here you're starting on an earth planet set up where you're in atmosphere and everything has become a huge waste there's collecting those three coloured orbs there to increase the beam power when you get up to about eight levels you're at maximum so the beam will not noticeably be more powerful beyond five but you can go up to eight for a really long energy release if you so wish to use that so here's the layering effect starting to really become prominent here. You can see the dust and the buildings in the background and the aircraft carrier inside the giant mutated crustacean underneath there. Now those foreground layers are actually obstacles, so as they move, as you can see here, you have to avoid them or else you'll crash, which I thought was a nice touch. There also appears to be some hint that some of humanity is actually sided with the enemy force as you get some humanoid characters along with the more alien and lizard and insectoid looking shaped enemies they really give the impression that there's just waves and waves being thrown even on earth as it's already been virtually wiped out It's great how you see the camera panning as well, it's really quite interesting. And this was 1991, as I'd said previously in the first video, so a good three years before Darius Gaiden. Here we have the first boss. For me this seems to have a type of wasp or hornet look to it, which I really liked. Each boss has a cybernetic mutated creature style to it, with probably one exception, and then the end boss, which is quite something bizarre, so I'll leave that to the end to talk about. Now all these bosses don't seem like massive bullet sponges, so they don't have to stay your welcome. Here's an example of those huge explosions that I talked about in the end of the last video. They're colour coded to each boss and have a good segue into the next level for a transition. 
here you can see there's this bonus stage where you have an afterburner type lock on gameplay. You actually have to lock on to the weak point of the enemy unit. You can't just hover over any part of it to get the lock on. So you have to trace them ball, so scan around a little bit until it hits yellow to lock on. Again, you get the sense of the missiles turning around and illusion of death. You're going out at the high altitude, ready to go out into space for planet Earth. And there's the final bonus unit to destroy. There we go, perfect bonus. Now as you can see it starts setting off into space. Into the solar system. Now, interesting enough in this game there's actually talking about the, the setting and the almost post-apocalyptic vibe to it. There's actually an alternative bad ending if you don't quite complete the game. Where you find that you're part of a remaining space fleet that leaves the solar system and no space. And you see a huge invasion of more humanoid ships launching all these missiles into the remaining planets. There's an enemy that has a bit of a Darius vibe to it. More power ups to pick up for the energy. Encouraging you to use the beam strategically. But I'm just using the regular weapon at the moment. I also like the fact that the enemies are not massive bullet sponges either like the bosses so that it's mostly about avoidance and learning the different patterns of the enemies in combination. Even these sub bosses seem to not outstay their welcome compared to other games I've played. Now each level seems to have a progressive storytelling to the travel, like the journey of everything which I also like. I thought it was interesting the ship was called the Black Fly. I don't know if it's any coincidence or not to Don Patchy with his B reference for the ship. a particularly unusual pattern and dive twice there. I don't think you see that anymore in the game on any of the levels. As you can see this smaller moon shaped object coming towards the camera for the second boss. So they keep consistent with the art style right the way through despite the environment transitioning so much. As you can see from the pink blasts, you can actually repulse continuous beams from any of the enemies. It's only the torpedo-like projectiles that you can't destroy or repulse. So if someone's firing more of a beam weapon like your own at you, you can push it back by firing in return. Well, that reminded me a little bit of Missile Command. We'll walk straight into it. And there's a second continue. As you can see, it's starting to die a little bit more without knowing all the level. Still not, at this point, disruptive. You can skill your way through some of it without memorization. You keep focused.
and I'll start to see some more 3D effects. You know, heading through space debris and what looks like previous space colonies and space stations. There's collecting nuclear junk from previous failed wars or destroyed space installations that have wiped out from your human faction. I like the way that attached to the side of all the space debris. It's a nice touch. <laughs> That's what happens if you switch off for a moment. The enemy's coming behind you. Starting to struggle here, I think, without memorization, losing focus a bit. I think it's good to save and take a little break first time playthrough. Things get quite intense. Hitting the barrier, get destroyed. Found this particular part quite hard. Very circular motion, so the enemies, lots of them swarming around you. I have to memorize some of the patterns. There's another insectoid type boss. Some giant cybernetic beetle. Love resistant elements. This has got a nice few set of layers to it. I think I regain focus a little bit more here. Dodging all of the weapons and strange creatures coming to get him. <laughs> and big explosion. So interestingly that orb and the beetle were considered the entire boss. This is the second and final bonus stage of the game. It's a lot harder than the first to destroy all the enemies. I had replayed this and got a better score. I think I was one away from getting the golden yellow at the unit at the end, but this playthrough I didn't do as well. Some really drawn out lock on missile firing in this. So I'm just doing some kind of biomechanical nest or lit up asteroid of some kind. There's that over. Crystallize.
when you head further into deep space on this you'll start to see the colour palette of all various nebulas and so on showing up. Each level was particularly difficult as you had enemies coming down and on the top of the screen and below below you a lot with angled fire so it was very different paths to the previous levels to catch you out. You can see the bubbles just slow you down. Oh, not quite quick enough there. You're starting to see an introduction of barrier gameplay mechanics. So there's some angled fire that called me out. I think I eventually got used to some of it, but earlier on in this level it's takes you by surprise. Now I hadn't worked out to get through this part. I don't know if it, you have to do exactly diagonal up to survive it. So I have to replay and see how you get through that really tight moving cave part. It looks like that was designed to take an extra quarter off your or coin at the arcades for sure. A bit cynical perhaps. <laughs> that was a cheeky little one. That was a you dodge and it immediately knows that you're probably going to dodge in that location. Fires another angled beam. Again, yeah, you notice some um, quick kill patterns to the waves on this level. I found these orbs really annoying because you couldn't actually shoot through them. It's quite an interesting effect when you hit the beams against them. This is a great boss. I'm not entirely sure of what it's meant to be, but I think that one of the alien or cybernetic aliens is actually using this more humanoid vehicle as a like a shell. I'm dwelling in it. Oh, that was a great part. Good sequence. I like the slow moving objects that you have to dodge in these horizontal shooter games. I didn't do very well there. This is actually a fun boss to replay. I have replayed this one before once and um, I think I did a lot better that time start to pick up my concentration again. Now a slight little pull in back, I'm just gonna hit by the missiles. Now you'll see a lot of control trying to counter the beam weapons while you're on the lower beam power yourself. Slightly moving the angle to hit it and there it goes. Great shot of going past an asteroid. Moving on to Mars. Oof. No 
you can see the difficulty really starting to ramp up. All these little nanite looking things trying to slow you down like leeches. You start to see these spacesuits a bit more humanoid. Biomechanical look to the level. Gives me some R type vibes. Yeah, now you can see that this requires a bit of getting used to. You'll be losing half your wallet trying to play this unless you're a really good, experienced player. Being slowed down with the more things that attach to your ship. You can't get out of the way of the ankle beams in time. Unless you destroy so many of them. See the game slightly slow down as more objects appear on screen. Gives you a chance to pick where you're going to fire. Now you have a chameleon type boss. I particularly like this. The way they coded all this together to make it look like you're in all the debris and it's cloaking in and out visibility. Really good time good effects for the time. Again, there's always something new in this. There's that beam being repulsed. Quite do it there. I played this once before on a save actually. And again, I found it a lot easier after playing through it this first time. I think because you know that it's going to reappear again, you get out of the way. Towards the end of the game now. It's be a bit Larry. Probably could have dodged that one. It's quite a slow beam. Wasn't quick enough there to accelerate. 
sometimes you can get away with accelerating quite far, far forwards in this if you don't take the opportunity to kick yourself. This example of like sub bosses not being too much of a bullet sponge. Includes the name of the level as well. For Arch of Mind, some of these might not be real. Final box. Well, this is meant to represent being out of space and time. It seems like this giant bow like creature is see there's some sort of idea that the history of humanity is absorbed by this creature and somehow related to the destruction of the solar system. You can see the timeline going forward to the background. It's quite trippy. Referencing something about warlike nature of humanity or something. some sort of justification for the destruction just the fleet remaining I've managed to figure out how to destroy the yellow dotted chains that come at you but the tail with the beam I haven't quite figured out what the pattern is with those to survive it all the time I think on this playthrough I didn't survive any of them I kept trying to move away but I think I have to move forwards and back I'm not entirely sure what the whole cat thing's about I think those eyes might be cybernetic or mutated See with destruction of that weird space creature. It's <laughs> blowing the planet Earth in half. Now this is the good ending. But even here it seems somehow troubling or strange. <laughs> Was it a phantasm? The last attack in all its last moments. And after the invasion's been stopped, you, you don't know if if any of it was even real as it's been wiped from the timeline. And everything's just left in a strange state. And roll credits. Thanks for watching and I'll leave you with the outro animation and credits.
worth, well worth a play.